Good morning, friends. Good day. Will be journal number 12, June the 30th. And uh, continuing on with our exploration of spontaneous projection from the waking state. Although I do read from uh, uh, projection books that aren't necessarily from the waking state, but they're full of uh, interesting and uh, expansive experiences. And today we'll start out with an, a quite inspiring one from uh, Waldo Vieira, and uh, whose book Projections of the Consciousness from the, you know, 1980 or so has been uh, consulted before. <clears throat> I was fully lucid, following behind three extra-physical females as they entered an enormous extra-physical institution, of course that's out of body, in a monumental building with thick closed doors. It was dark there. The institution is located somewhere in the crustal dimension, close to the human areas and perhaps above the troposphere. There's all these areas. Some are closer to the physical dimension and others are farther away. I think that's pretty obvious. The atmosphere gradually improved as we went down various deserted halls, opening, passing through and closing three doors in succession as we went. All this in near darkness, immersed in absolute silence. The third area we reached had a much friendlier feeling being filled with a tranquilizing light. An impressive spectacle began just after the group entered. In the immense room resembling an impeccably clean nursery with a high ceiling and white beds, dozens of quote-unquote women began to sing an adorable chant of happiness that began with a vibrant refrain. Sister souls, here we are, the donors of life. The marvelous collective song prayer a mental dialogue of pure emotions was sung by the extra-physical females of indescribable beauty. They were dressed in white, the majority of them simply sitting on the beds in the environment, crisscrossed with multicolored images, composing a picture difficult to describe. Energy surged from the eyes, thoraxes, and hands of the singers. These surges of energy became more intense moment by moment, were synchronized to the rhythm of the chant, creating an awesome scenery of multifaceted reflections. Finally, an abundance of sapphire rays poured out in all directions. I almost began singing the enchanting melody that instilled an indescribable sense of well-being and euphoria in all present, the extent of which perhaps only these females could appreciate. These non-human voices expressed a most elevated feeling or set of feelings. The energies were irresistible. I became like a child once again, and allowing myself to be overtaken by the refrain of the lullaby. It seemed like spring within the walls of the extra-physical construction, where the illumination gradually increased as the voices became louder. For the first time I contemplated a crowd of beautiful, quote-unquote, women I had never seen before. True, translucent Madonnas and angelic beings without the slightest thought of sex. Questions arose within me. Who was who in this assembly? Which were extra-physical consciousness and which ones were projected? Were some of them pregnant? The rain of luminous effects did not allow me to perceive the difference. An explanation was transmitted to me. The extra-physical consciousness that, that were on the beds were preparing for their own rebirth, their own rebirth, and would eventually become mothers. The anthem of praise was motherhood, and it was being sung by all, including many projected women who would receive others as their children in intraphysical life. There were only female extraphysical consciousnesses participating in the grand chorus in a celebration of the mothers that would receive the daughters, who would themselves become heroines of motherhood in the near future. 
This organization works to renew the more somber areas of the undeveloped extraphysical dimensions, while sim simultaneously preparing for the upcoming intraphysical lives. I was sincerely surprised to find myself in this extraphysical work group composed of and directed by several profoundly feminine extraphysical quote-unquote women. They were deeply involved with the sentiments of motherhood in an institution specializing in the matter. The elevated nature of the ambiance transformed the extraphysical nursery into a repeated would uh, oh sorry into a repeated sanctuary divided by only bluish flames. The chant was being repeated that would have brought tears of joy even to the most insensitive individual. My individual state did not allow me to recall and faithfully report the indescribable lyrics and melody, the eagerness of the feminine chorus, the energetic waves produced by the subtle bodies, the sonorous tenderness spread by the voices and the changes of the colours in the prodigious rain of lights that rained down from on high. That uh, makes me recall the various musical events I've attended and tried to uh, rather unsuccessfully describe to you. Uh, things slip away as one attempts to communicate to this level. It was an unimaginable siren's chant that was being sung. It was impossible for me to hold back the tears of joy brought on by the sweetness of the voices, which soon provoked the admonitory discomfort of the call to return to the physical base. Finding myself in a state of exaltation that was nearly impossible to tolerate, I was not able to recall all the details of the events. It was a shame, because I've always wanted to know in which conditions the pregnant projector carries, along with the, the consciousness who is a candidate for intraphysical life. Just, uh, here's some observations later on. Just like the emotionalism I experienced in the above projection, one can experience small, harmless, extra-physical shocks that can provoke an emotional reaction in the beginning projector. Take notes. Some examples are passing the extra-physical hand through a physical object. Oh, that can be interesting. Passing the, through walls or humans. Observing one's own inanimate body up close. Yes. Seeing one's uh, astral body reflected in a mirror quick takeoffs from the body, hearing intracranial sounds related to the sudden return to the body, meticulous examination of the silver cord, expansion of the consciousness and the visual perceptions, seeing oneself projected in a partially formed uh, astral body, sensing the exact moment of the loss of respiration, free flight, extraphysical euphoria, encountering a deceased friend or relative, suffering an attack from a what he calls a psychotic post-mortem, you know, there's uh, earthbounds that are really uh, twisted. Um, experiencing the transcending of time and space continuum with super lucidity. Oh, that's a good one. The level of the above extraphysical events is always determined by the quality of the projective experiment. While I insist that the projector avoid emotionalism and mysticism, while executing the projective tasks, I'm not recommending that he no longer have emotions, feelings, or affection, turning him into a cold and sensitive individual. I am personally quite disarmed by the sweetness of the mature consciousness, the simple jest of a child, the sight of a beautiful landscape, the contemplation of a work of art, or the passage in a musical play. The truth, however, is that in the extra-physical dimension, an emotional state of mind is always proven counterproductive to extra-physical observation. Yes, and uh, I often will advise people here, there, and everywhere not to get too excited, to do it all calmly. Getting excited will often send you back to the body, just sort of like palpitations, vibrations. So um, with that little bit of inspiration, let me uh, continue. In the last few days, I had a medical condition where the temporary 
where I had to w wait in a hospital emergency room to get attention. It was very busy. And a lot of sitting down, lying on couches, waiting to get attended to, because uh, there was many others there. And uh, in fact, lost almost two nights sleep over it, uh, because uh, they're so busy. And uh, that was interesting. Couldn't do this. <laughs> well, you know, lying on a stretcher, uh, waiting for attention it's at some point in pain and at other point having the pain relieved but still waiting to get an okay from a doctor right up till those six in the morning I was awake all night as was my wife and uh, so interesting that that would I'm not saying I was attacked or anything that's I'm not going to get that paranoid um, and I don't feel that I was just something in my body had to be attended to and it was but boy did it take a long time so um just a, a point in question, you might have thought, oh, he's been busy, and now he's not. So here we are at June the 30th, and if you look at these, you know, a few days from now, it won't make any difference. But um, I wanted to concentrate now on, uh, since David Grush's uh, whistleblowing episode been reported and reported and praised and decried all through the internet. Not much on mainstream media, but, you know, they'll, they'll get to it when they have to. <laughs> They can't avoid it anymore. Um, but uh, much discussion of that. And other whistleblowers coming forward. Marco Rubio saying, Senator Marco Rubio, yes, they've come to our, uh, our, uh, her, her, her subcommittee and given similar reports uh, anonymously in the last year or so because, you know, anonymous because we want to protect them. So he said, I'm not surprised by what David Grush said. You know, so there's... Um, reports and uh, multiple reports so you know the presence of aliens the visiting of uh, aliens the uh, bodies and craft of extraterrestrial biological entities uh, stored in various places all this is a reality and uh, some of it much to the efforts of Stephen Greer and others to uh, get senators and House representatives interested in this so that they would move Amer a government into ex exploring it uh, rationally and consciously rather than whispers in dark hallways. And, um, you know, it's an ongoing process. We can see it's going to take months. But um, it's happening. And we're embracing the, uh, the beginnings of, as a culture, multidimensional consciousness and the presence of extraterrestrial biological entities who are sentient beings just like us, no matter what their form is, just as birds, fish, mammals are sentient beings, nature spirits are sentient beings. The brotherhood of man is on its way and it will introduce the brotherhood of sentient beings at least as a concept. <laughs> so I've been thinking about uh, Senator Harry Reid, who was, we know from, I was, I'm an, <laughs> always been on the lower levels of the UFO community. I know researchers, I don't do research myself, but I read all the books, etc., etc., etc. So uh, we knew Harry Reid was uh, big on this, even before it was public knowledge. It was whispered. We knew he was interested. He knew he wanted to bring it to the light. And I don't think anyone would not uh, acknowledge this. What he said to various people, including uh, other researchers who managed to get a, a quick, quiet, uh, private interview with him. Uh, you know, what's that story? Uh, approaching him at a conference or something and uh, him going, uh, come on down the hall to my office and leading him in and going, uh, yeah, it's everything we say it is and more. And it's, I can't even tell you everything that I know. And if I did, you'd be shocked. That's sort of a, a thing. That's been reported. You can find out if you dig it up. Anyway, Harry's been uh, in the other world for uh, a couple of years anyway. And he was uh, wise enough to quote uh, Leonard Cohen in his... Uh, uh, goodbye speech and uh, you know there's a crack in everything that's where the light gets in and um, he was exploring one of those cracks God bless him 
taking his uh, long-term government reputation and putting it on the line. And he got plenty of admiration, quiet admiration for doing so. So I thought, God, I wonder what Harry's thinking about now in all this excitement and flurry. So uh, let's go have a chat with him. It was suggested to me some while ago, or even yesterday, that I should do this. Or did I suggest it to myself? <laughs> One never knows these things. Not really. You know, the upper regions of your being is, uh, it's there, but it's not uh, not easy to define. You know, there's guides, there's advisors, there's other uh, projectors that one knows that are in on the divine conspiracy of, you know, opening up the greater world to the consciousness of the planet. Ah, good day, sir. I trust this visit is uh, uh, to your liking. Oh, yes, it is, sir. It's very to my liking. I've been waiting for someone like you to come by. Well, someone like you has come by, but as far as we know, no one's put it on the Internet. And uh, I, uh, I thank you for your inspiration. Uh, well, Mr. Reed, I... Um, you know, I'm a, an explorer of uh, afterlife realms and have been for a number of years and uh, have touched on many uh, human uh, spirits and uh, asked them for their interests and concerns and just a general uh, reaction to being, you know, an inhabitant of eternal life. So I might ask you the same. Well, I was looking forward to it. I'd had intuitions that I'd been here a number of times while still alive and uh, did not speak publicly of it, of course. Such things are close to uh, one's religious and spiritual heart and one is wise to uh, keep quiet, if not silent, about such matters revealing only to one's closest intimates the uh, mystical experiences one has touched upon in one's life. In public life, one is required to be practical, rational, and without, uh, when without the sort of experiences that make others nervous and suspicious. There are certain things one does not tell children when they are, you know, preschool. One keeps to the reassuring fairy tales and joyous experiences that all children should be having in their play and their daily life. One does not discuss wars and disasters unless one is directly questioned. And even then, one can water it down as much as possible. I know you're going to ask me about the recent uh, revelations of whistleblowers. And uh, yes, I'm quite aware of it, as are a number of others. And we were preparing for this for years. Definitely in on getting other government members to listen to and accept what we knew. And that was not easy. Not everyone was willing to listen. Not everyone was willing to go out on a limb. One requires uh, credibility and uh, stability to get reelected. And you may think that is a politician's ego agenda, but it's very real. We have to get elected regularly. And if you're not elected and you're not in a position of power and influence, 
there's not much that you can do. You're a former representative. You're a former senator with a certain amount of uh, sway, but not that much. And of course, the many other political, serious political issues that came along while we were beavering away at this uh, agenda of public knowledge, the expansion of public knowledge, and the movement away from secrecy and extra legal profit making of which I think it's now becoming obvious how much money was made in these secret space programs, how much profit was accumulated for those that were in on the game and were willing to keep very quiet for many years. Of course, there are other ways when in government and in government-related institutions uh, corporations that are contractors uh, to make ridiculous amounts of profits to the point of uh, what I would call useless wealth. <laughs> anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, one believes in the free market enterprise system. One does not believe in gross and obscene profit for the sake of it. Wealth for pride. Excessive wealth for pride. Excessive wealth that should be graciously redistributed to social programs and those in need, whether in your country or internationally. This, of course, has always gone on. It's just uh, proceeding in the late 20th century in another guise. And since the, uh, you know, the discovery or the, you know, the alien craft and the technologies within, referred to by General Corso in his book Day After Roswell many years ago, and still not acted upon, you know, reverse engineering, um, well known in the community, well, well known. Uh, but not acted upon because the forces that wished to keep it secret and away from the public eye, the legitimate government control, is uh, legion. The amount of it is just legion. The accumulation of slush funds off the books that financed all sorts of aggrandizing activity, whether it be warlike or fraudulent uh, trading, went on in great capacities for years and still does. Anyway, that's perhaps a side issue. The main issue is that we embrace this greater reality that we are not alone in the universe than we never have been. That all religions are mere approximations of spiritual truth. Useful to a certain point, but not much so beyond that point. And I think one of the uh, more interesting elements of embracing these extraterrestrial biological entities, is to have philosophical and theological discussions about what they believe vis-a-vis -vis the God consciousness, the creator of universes, the uh, makers of planets and stars, how all this comes about uh, in terms of not just science, but of... Uh, the science that we cannot see or understand currently. Because, as you know, our instruments only go so far. And uh, even though they go much farther than they did a century ago, they can still go much farther. Yeah, I'm, I don't have to tell you how much of the universe is dark matter. That They say, well, we don't know much about dark matter. 
there's a heck of a lot of dark matter, percentage-wise. A heck of a lot. And uh, such things need to be explored rigorously, with great curiosity. And I am certain that these, some of these, if not all of these, extraterrestrial biological entities will have done more exploration of this than we have and will be of great assistance to us uh, once we uh, throw up our arms and go, okay, we're not going to, you know, go to nuclear war again. Not that I think the aliens would ever let us. You know about all the uh, flybys on missile launching sites where they shut them down. Well, that was a reality for those in the know for many, many years. And it's pretty obvious they're not going to allow that. They can uh, switch off triggering systems for, you know, two or three hours a day. They've done it all over the place, not just in North America. So there's my hope for that, sir. And I'm, I'm nodding and saying, well, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Reed. That's great. That's kind of, that's just what I wanted to hear. But, uh, and I hope the audience on the internet will be as pleased with your, uh, report as, as I am. And um, may I ask how you're enjoying the afterlife? And he says, and he says, very much. It's everything that I had hoped for and more. The beautiful feathery lightness of my body, the nimbleness of my thought, the bird-like giddiness of my emotions, the renewed vigor of curiosity, creative curiosity in the nature of our world here, much more mysterious than the physical plane, I would say. But, you know, I'm only at the, uh, the foothills of discovery here, and uh, I've been already... Uh, attending uh, lectures and talks and discussion groups with those in the know. People, friends of mine who passed earlier, who would say, Harry, you got to come and hear this person. you got to come to this. you got to come to that. Come on. And, um, you know, endless round of interesting things to do and hear about. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, reuniting with uh, friends and family members and, uh, you know, uh, the joyousness of love between these beings, myself and these beings, the healing of old wounds, you know, all this is wonderful stuff. And I recommend it to anybody who may be a little leery of uh, passing out of the, the physical body and coming here, who may think, Oh, I'd rather have physical immortality. I'd rather have great health till I'm 105. I say, don't bother. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. You'll love it. Uh, you got a, a good heart and a, a, an open mind. It's wonderful. It's endless moments of joy and discovery. And uh, I, I make a call out to uh, all the people interested in the upcoming election. May you all strive to achieve the visions you believe in. It will be an interesting race for president. And I, um, I'm yet to choose uh, my favorite candidate. Not that being here makes much difference. I'm not voting, but I do take an interest. As a long-lived politico, I cannot help but be one who takes great interest in such events. The world is as much a set of problems to resolve as it is a set of experiences to have and a set of joys to participate in. And I wish you all joyful continuance of that. Well, thank you, Mr. Reed. That's a wonderful message. I'm so happy I came to see you. Um, I was only aware of some of your activities. 
as a, a lower level sort of uh, participant in the UFO community for a number of years. I heard your name mentioned with uh, with uh, great praise and and uh, pride by those in the know who knew what you were quietly and creatively up to and what you were willing to risk to achieve certain aims. You have uh, left, uh, you know, uh, feelings of respect for your name and your career here on the planet. I'm sure you had your enemies, um, but uh, in the community I moved in, you were someone who was uh, much respected and still are. And I thank you for this uh, contribution. And I assure you, it will go out public very, very soon, within a matter of hours. Thank you, sir. Well, friends, I found myself in a house somewhere. It has a, has a dwelling. And I, I didn't bother examining the outside and seeing was it grand or was it humble. It was sufficient for his needs. And he seemed quite comfortable there. And uh, there might have been friends and family around, you know, long deceased, as it were. Um, you know, grandparents, I, you know, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, I was there to see him and it was, you know, kind of set up ahead of time. And if you know where somebody is and you don't, uh, well, there's this sort of geographical thing of knowing where somebody lives. Uh, but there's also the thought form and the desire, which is all about this spontaneous production. Um, some of these earlier OBEs were set up sort of semi-consciously ahead of time, but others were total surprises to me. And um, uh, you know the you know the the Epstein, the uh, Putin, you know various ones were uh, sudden inspirations. Now, with sudden inspirations, you know, were they sort of subtly organized slightly outside of my regular consciousness? It's often hard to say. And you can waste a lot of energy trying to figure that out. It doesn't really matter. The fact is that you knew how to go there and you went. And that's what I'm trying to teach here. Develop those desires and develop the understanding that you can do it. And just do it. Anyway, that's enough for this episode and we'll be returning very soon. Thank you.